Hello guys, in this video we want to continue working on the Foodmine project by adding food details to the thumbnails and make them like this. Let's see how. Okay, the step that we want to start with is creating food class for holding food details. Let's go into the code. Inside the app folder, services, food and food service. As you can see here, the get all function inside the food service will return only food images. It should return all the details about the food. For holding the details of the food, we should create something called models. That's a class actually, so let's create it. Here inside the app folder, right click on it and create a new folder called shared. I call it shared because I want it to be shared between services and the components. Create another folder here with the name of models. We're holding all the shared models here and let's create a new file here with the name of food.ts for creating the food model inside it let's close the explorer here we actually need a class so let's create it by writing export class food if you're wondering what is this export keyword it's actually makes this class accessible from the outside of this food.ts file so let's start adding the properties of the food here the first property is id that is of type of number as you can see there we have an error property id has no initializer and is not definitely signed in the constructor it means the TypeScript doesn't have any clue what should be the value of ID when we want to create a new food. This will happen in newer version of Angular because of enabling that stricter type checking. There are a couple of ways to get rid of this error. The first way is creating a constructor. So you can create a constructor. You can say I want an ID input with a type of number, okay? And you can set this object ID, this object ID equal to this ID and the error will gone because by doing this whenever we want to create a new food it knows it should call the constructor and this id will be mandatory and we should put the id value inside it so it will be so predictable but there is an easier way to have exactly the same behavior instead of creating a big constructor for our big model okay we can add an exclamation mark here by adding this exclamation mark we are telling hey food this ID is mandatory. Whenever somebody wants to create a new instance of you, he or she should set this value, okay? So you're gonna be asking, what if I want it to be optional? It's easy, just replace it with a question mark. So it will be optional, so you can create a food without setting the ID and it will be undefined. But sometimes you don't want a field to be mandatory and you don't want it to be set as undefined. You want it to have a default value. So that's easy. Just remove everything after the name of the property and go here at the equal sign and set the default value, for example, zero. But for our food class, we want this ID to be mandatory because it's the identity of the food. The next property is name. And it's mandatory too. It's a string, price, mandatory, number, tags, it's optional, and it's in string array. Favorite, it's boolean, and its default value should be false. Stars, this is not mandatory, and it's a number, and its default value should be zero. Image URL, it's mandatory, and it should be string. Origins, it's mandatory, and it's a string array. Cook time, that is mandatory, and it's a string. We did the first part. Let's check this and go for the second one. Now, the second thing that we want to do inside this video is changing get all function inside food service to return food models instead of only images. If we go to the project here inside the food service, we can see it's just returning in a string array and we have only food images. Okay. Now we need to replace it with our currently created food model. But before that, we need to import it here. Import food from our directory will go to the food service folder, our directory will go to the app folder. Now we need to go to the shared and models and food. Now we have the food inside this file. We need to change this string array to food array. But as you can see, we have error here. We need to change them to some object. So each object here represents the food. As you can see, by leaving the object empty, it will throw an error. If we hover on that, it says it's missing the following properties. It says that you can't leave it empty. You should Build these mandatory properties and that's what we want to do right now we want to set id to one name two i want to copy it from my already made project and you can also copy it from the o changes link that i will put in the description below okay our get all functions data is ready now let's jump into the bullet points and check this one 
The next step is changing foods property type in home component to food array instead of string array. What do you mean, Nasir? Okay, I'll tell you. Wait a minute. Let's get back to the code and go to the home component TS file. Close this and close this. As you can see, we have an error here. It says that food array is not assignable to a string array because our food here is of type string array. We need to change it to food array. But once again, we need to import it here. Here we go. We have the food here. We need to change this string array to food, just like the food service. But after doing this, if you go and look at the result, we can see that there is no image. The reason is we changed the food's properties responsibility from holding only food images into holding the whole structure of the food. Now for fixing this problem, go to the template file of home component. We need to set food.image URL as the source of our image. Now if we look at the result, we can see that we have the images back. Okay, we did this part. Let's check this one. Now we are on the most important part of this video, that is adding food details into the food cart list HTML file or showing food details to the user. We want to start from the name. Let's go into the code here inside the A tag after image. We need to add a div with a class of content and another div with a class of name. We need to use interpolation here with the value of food.name for showing the name. Now, if you look at the result, we could see that we have food names at the bottom of food images. That's what we want. Okay, we did adding the name. Let's check this one and let's go for adding his favorite inside our food cut list. Here inside the code, inside the content class, after the name div, let's add a span with the class of favorite. And I want to copy a hard character that I found from the internet and you can do it easily. But if you don't want to do that, you can easily copy it from the code changes link in the description below. But if you look at the result, we could see that we have this hard character placed here beautifully. But it's not done yet because it's always red. We want it to be red whenever favorite is true, not always. Okay, so let's go into the code. Here after the favorite class, we need to do another interpolation. We should say if food.favorite is true, no class should be added here inside this span because by default the heart is red. But otherwise, we should add not class here because if it's not favorite, it should be gray and we should implement it in this class inside the CSS. But since we are not implementing any CSS in this session, it will remain the same. We'll do the CSS part of the food cards in the next video. Okay, but now we did the favorite part and it's time for the stars. The third property that I want to add to the project is a stars or a star rating. Okay, for this property, I want to use an npm package called ng star rating so let's for it ng star rating as you can see the first item in the google is ng star rating so we can go into the npm package manager here we can install it by using this command and we can use it by following the usage part so let's start from installing ng star rating inside our project so let's click on it you can see it says copy to clipboard let's get back to the code open up terminal inside the new tab paste it here so the project will start to install this ng star rating here we go it's ready to use now we can close the terminal if you follow this guide here inside the usage part, we need to add the rating module inside our app.module.ts. Let's do it inside the explorer app.module.ts. We need to come over here and write import rating module from ng star rating. As you know, each Angular project is a module. For adding Angular projects, we shouldn't add them inside the declarations part because we need to add our components and something that is part of this module here. But this rating module is another Angular project and it's another module. So it should be added to the import part. So it should be rating module here. And uh, now we have functionality of this rating module inside our project. Now, if we follow this guide, we just need to copy this star rating component into our template okay inside the home component after the favorite we can copy this thing but it's horizontal let's make it vertical to have a better experience on reading
But as you can see, it has a couple of errors that we need to fix it. If you hover our mouse over this property, it says type string is not assignable to type number. It means the value property inside this star rating is of type number, but we are setting a string value inside it. But you could say, so what is wrong? We are passing a number. It's not a string. No, it will be rendered as a string. Whenever you use a property just like a normal HTML property without anything. For rendering this value as a normal JavaScript value or JavaScript number, we should put this property inside the square brackets and it will fix the error. Same with the total stars. Total star is of type number, but the value is a string. So we need to put it inside double square brackets. Checked color as you can see. It's a string, so there will be no problem. Uncheck color be black. I want the size to be 18 pixel. Once again, with the read-only property, it's Boolean, and you need to put it inside double square bracket to behavior just like a normal false value inside JavaScript. We don't want to have a rating behavior, so I will remove that on rate. And read-only should be true. User couldn't be able to change the stars for now because we are not using a backend thing to send this new value to the backend. We are just loading it from our local uh, project. But here the value should not be five. Here we need to change this five property with the value from the food. We easily could write food dot stars so this value will be the stars of the food okay let's see the result let's close this one as you can see we have these stars beautifully placed here maybe it's better to increase the size of the stars a little bit for example make it 20 pixel now they are look better okay we did this part let's go for the origins we're adding the origins property here inside the code after the star rating we need to add another div with a class of product item footer and inside it we need to add another div with the class of origins now we need to add a span here and since this origins property is in string array and it's not a single value property we need to use ng4 here to loop through these origins okay ng4 should write let origin of food.origins so now this span will be called as many times as number of values inside these origins and each time with a single origin that is inside this origin. So we have our origins. Now we just need to show them, okay? Use interpolation and origin. Now if we look at the result, we could see that we have our origins here, but not completely. The height of this part, it's not big enough to show them. It's because we don't want to show these items vertically. We want to show half of these items on the right side. Okay, but for now, because we want to see our result, let's increase the height of these parts. Let's go inside the home component CSS file. Here inside ULLIA, let's increase the height to 25 RAM. Now, if you look at the result, we easily can see these origins. Let's go for the next item, the cook time. Inside the product item footer class, after the origins, we need to add another div with the class of cook time. Inside it, I wanna add a span with the emoji of a clock. If you're using Windows, you can press Windows dot to see all the emojis and search for clock and select one of them. I select three o'clock because I like it more. You can select any other ones here. And then at the bottom of it, we want to show the text that represent the cook time of this special food. Okay, food dot cook time interpolation here we go let's look at the result as you can see we have this beautiful shape cook time represented here let's go and check cook time and let's add the price inside the code after the product item footer add another div with the class of price here inside it add a spin and inside the interpolation write food dot price but as you can see, it doesn't have any dollar sign or anything about the currency. You can add the dollar sign into our currency property, but there is an easier way inside Angular. You could easily format your output. If you press shift and backslash to create a pipe, you could see that there is a couple of predefined formatters that you can easily use. Let's choose the currency and see the result. As you can see, we just added the price.
In the next video, we're gonna add styles to these cards to put them in the right places. So stay tuned and don't forget to subscribe and hit that bell button to not miss the future videos. And to that time, have a good life.